Want to welcome back our audience here to the Florida International University uh, Radcliffe Art and Design Incubator in collaboration with Inspecho Arts. And I want to welcome in every week Ray Elman. What a pleasure. Thank you for having me back, Maggie. It, it always makes me feel like I must be doing something right if you invite me back. <laughs> Well, you know, that that's interesting you say that, right? Because this has become almost a month and more of this collaboration, which I think uh, people appreciate the preview. So thank you to all of those that give us the feedback. So we have an interesting guest um, coming up on Inspecho Arts, and it's Jack Rapke. I hope I said it correctly. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to talk about him because he's raised in South Florida. I always love, you know, the talented Floridians that we get out in Hollywood making it big. Um, you know, he's a graduate of the, you know, the NYU uh, Film School, and then he moved to LA. So I want to talk about, I guess, one of his uh, first productions, um, an award-winning one, Castaway, which we all know with Tom Hanks, Helen Hunt, and directed by, you know, none other than Robert Zemeckis. Um, there's an interesting part there to, to the story that I want our listeners and, and kind of our audience to take away from this. Um, when he was originally handed the script, correct, um, there was 45 minutes of, of nothing, right? So how does that volleyball become kind of the center of the story? Well, it, it, it was really, first of all, it was really fun to interview Jack Rapke because he has been engaged with the A-list of A-lists of people in Hollywood. He was the chairman of CAA, which is arguably the most important talent agency in Hollywood. And his personal uh, list of clients is, you know, the top list of especially directors. Um, and what's interesting was he, as his son got older, as Jack's son got older, um, uh, he started to be interested in filmmaking too. And he started watching his film, his son start to make films in film school. And he thought, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Am I going to watch my son become a filmmaker? And I'm going to sit on the sides watching him. And he said, no, I want to make films. So after being chairman of the board of, of um, CAA, which he could have done for the rest of his life um, and made a lot of money, he decided to engage in his first film and he formed a film production company with Robert Zemeckis. I think it's called Image Mover. And <clears throat> I think they formed it two years before Castaway was made. And when they started looking at the script for Castaway, he sees that it's got, you know, as, as I'm sure most of our audience knows, Tom Hanks gets marooned on a, de a deserted island and he's there for years, I think. Um, he starts off being a little overweight and by the end of it, he's got this lean, um, almost wild man body. And, uh, when he's looking, when Jack's looking at the script, he sees it's got 45 minutes of silence in it. He said, you mean we're gonna make a major motion picture with Tom Hanks and Helen Hunt and nobody's gonna talk for 45 minutes? And they're trying to figure out what to do about that. In the meantime, they had the screenwriter put on a deserted island uh, and brought a crew in that was uh, a, a team of survivalists uh, in case he needed help, but they actually isolated him. He's a former Marine and things like that. So he went through survival training. And while he's on the island, all of a sudden a volleyball washes ashore on the beach. And he picks up the volleyball and he's kicking it down the beach and he's kind of having fun with it. And after a few days of that, he started talking to it uh, just like Tom Hanks did. And, uh, and that's the Eureka moment. And, the, and now they have this brilliant device 
where Tom can say anything he wants to somebody who never challenges him, Wilson, except the only challenges, as you know, from the movie, he's challenged by his own, Tom Hanks is that, challenged by his own mind, talking back to him through Wilson. So I, I thought that was one of the most brilliant elements of the film that I've really never seen, uh, seen that done in any other film before or since. You wanna hold, so on, you wanna hold yeah. on one second? Yeah. Just one second. That, I can't believe you walked away with that. <laughs> that is brilliant. Thank you for bringing that out. I will put them right here for the moment. Okay. What a great thing to have. Well, I'm glad that you shared that because I'm, I'm almost thinking, you know, a lot of people, you know, it was a hit. So a lot of people probably wondered or never knew um, this piece of information that is now out there um, in this interview. So I want to talk about innovation because that is the spirit of, you know, our FIU Radcliffe. You know, how does he innovate in these films? You know, is there any innovation to it, any tech component, something that has been groundbreaking in any of them? Well, I'm just going to go back to Castaway for a moment. So um, what, the question I asked him was, when I, when I looked up the name of the island where they shot the film, it really mm -hmm. is a, a deserted, a desert island off, off of Fiji. And I, I've never heard of the island before. And I said, you know, logistics must have been a nightmare because we see even with, uh, you know, the Alec Baldwin incident recently, mm -hmm. the whole element of having how many people are on these film crews. And so Jack talked about, uh, you know, I asked him what the biggest challenges were. And he said, well, that was one of them that it, the first time uh, they shot part of the film uh, that Tom Hanks had to go to another film and then he came back. The first time when they were on the desert island, they were staying in Fiji and taking a boat ride, an hour boat ride over to this island every day and an hour back, which clearly wastes a lot of time and money. And sometimes they'd encounter big seas, which tossed all the stuff around. And they had to be really careful with camera crews taking all the equipment off and loading all the equipment back on, uh, on the boat. And uh, so that was a logistical nightmare. And what they wound up doing instead was, in, in a sense, hiring a cruise ship that, that docked off the island. So they lived on the cruise ship. And then they set up all these um, uh, kind of sheds or, or, you know, waterproof sheds and, and, and buildings on the island where they could store, store the cameras and things like that so they didn't have to take it on and off the boat every day. And um, so that was, that, was, that was part of the innovation of how they put that all together. Okay, so let's kind of move the conversation forward, Ray. So as co-chairman of Creative Artist Agency, you know, for a, a good amount of time, there has to have been some skill set um, and some experiences that he brought on to his film career. So can you talk about that? Did he mention anything at all? I, I, think, I think that the, the most important thing to him in, in that regard was the people skills that he developed and the uh, skills of being honest and being transparent and not hiding anything from your clients. The, the, the way he said it, he said, when somebody says to me, it's a deal breaker. That means we're done talking. If that's a deal breaker and I don't want to agree with it, we're done talking. You can't come back to me and say, oh, well, I said it was a deal breaker, but you know, there's room, there's wiggle room in that. He doesn't want to hear that. He wants to uh, have a straightforward, transparent conversation. And I, my guess is that's why he had so many A-list clients because they trusted him. And the same thing, uh, went for being a film producer, that when you're talking with the crew, when you're talking with the talent, when, you know, that, that people need to know that your word is your bond. And, um, and I, I have a friend in the music business who's one of the biggest jazz music agents in the world. And he's got an extraordinary list roster of talent. 
And I think that's why. It's not because you're going out and having a drink with him every night. You're not his dinner buddy. You're He's somebody that, that you trust because his word is his bond. And I think that's been a big part of Jack Rapke's life. The other thing that was interesting for me, um, I have a dear friend who passed on last year named um, Alan Metter. And uh, I've known Alan a long time. Originally, we originally met in Truro on Cape Cod. Um, and Alan's biggest hit film was Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. And I, I asked Jack Rapke uh, if he by any chance knew Alan. And, and he said, as a matter of fact, uh, I was the producer of a movie that Alan made called Moving that starred Richard Pryor. And, uh, and uh, so I, you know, it was uh, kind of fun for me to connect that way, even though Alan's passed on. I wish I could call Alan and say, we had a conversation about you with Jack Rapke. So did he talk at all about anything else that he's working on? Well, his, his new movie, which is gonna come out February 5th, and it was postponed by the pandemic, it's called Finch. And what is it called? Finch, F-I-N-C-H. And it stars uh, Tom Hanks hmm. again. And everybody loves Tom Hanks, as we know. And it's about an apocalyptic future when all the things oh, wow. we're dealing with now come to, you know, the chickens come home to roost. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, Tom Hanks, from what I've gathered from the trailer, is trying at, to teach a, a robot how to behave so he can help him survive. So like one of the scenes, I think, I think the, the, he has a pet dog and in one of the scenes, I think the robot speaks, starts speaking dog language. So it sounds a little bit like um, a fast forward version of Castaway. Uh, that's true, it's just, it's just Tom. And instead of talking to a volleyball, he's talking to a robot. So Ray, this has been another fascinating talk. I really enjoyed going through this and also knowing that Wilson is in a safe place. Thank you again, Ray. Okay, well, the next time we see each other, I'll have uh, a number of interviews with people who are presenting at the Miami Book Fair. And um, you know that will be fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ray, have a great week. Okay, you too, bye-bye.